Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Scientix webinar, The Evolution to Education 4.0, the STEAM School of the Future. This webinar is organized by European Schoolnet in partnership with the Scientix project. My name is Maria Dios, and on behalf of the Scientix team, I would like to thank you all for joining us. Before I introduce our speaker, please let me go over a few housekeeping rules. My colleagues, Rocio Benito and Julia Lotina, are attending and supporting this webinar. If you experience technical issues, please leave us a message in the chat. They will also be sharing a link to a signature list for this event. Please take a short moment to fill it, as only by filling this form you will be able to receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar. Finally, we will be taking questions to our speaker in writing, and we will solve them at the end of the presentation. So feel free to ask any questions you may have to our speaker in the chat. And now let me introduce our speaker. Today with us, we have Dr. Gregory Macrides. He will present the STEAM project, Guidelines for Developing and Implementing STEAM Schools, which has developed a prototype school structure design with suggested dynamic curriculum, activities, learning and creativity plans and methods. Gregory, thank you for joining us today and the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Scientix team. Thank you, dear participants, for uh, joining us and uh, to spend an hour listening to me. And of course, I hope to listen to you also. Uh, we will uh, let me go to my first slide. Uh, we will try to travel together to the future today and um, share with you what we have developed uh, in this uh, European funded project, TIME. Uh, over the last two years, the project ended officially end of December, but for us, the project actually just started and you will understand what I mean when you see uh, my presentation. Let me begin first by uh, a note that Einstein said, everyone knows Einstein, who said that imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited to all we know, we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. First of all, in order to, un to try to imagine the future, and w whenever we try to imagine the future, keep in mind that we imagine the future with today's technologies. And we don't know exactly what the technologies in 15 or 20 years would be. If we knew, things would have changed from now. So, and the technologies we have today, we couldn't really imagine them 20 or 30 years ago. So whatever we try to predict or design the future is, is limited to the technology we understand today and we have today. And in order to really bring a change and, and evolve to the future, we need to study a little bit our past. And let me begin with that. I show you two photos which have uh, uh, a span of uh, 100 years, uh, from 1922 classroom to 2022. The question is, how many differences we see? Well, besides the fact that due to GDPR, we see people from their back nowadays, we don't kind of show their faces, we see some, some screens, we see some whiteboards uh, in, in the room, etc. But more or less, this classroom structure that looks like teacher center to me mostly uh, is still the same for 100 years. So this is what in what we're trying to change. Hmm? And this is what how we propose through this project to change things. But let me show you a few more uh, pictures here on the left. Uh, uh, you can see how we solve the problem of uh, air conditioning in the 50s when we didn't have air conditioning, but we will have a class in open sky, for example. And nowadays, of course, we can have very modern classrooms with air conditioning, etc. What else? For some of us uh, who uh, went to school in the 60s, 70s, maybe you remember these portable uh, boards on they were on wheels and 
we were able to move the class to the library, for example, and have a, a kind of a portability of teaching and learning in those times. Nowadays, of course, the portability is, uh, is much uh, easier because everything, all our books, um, all our notes and whatever uh, tools we need can be in one tablet or even in our smartphones that we have today. So this is what we know about technology today, but let's see. So more or less what uh, most people call education 1.0 is what education system we had, uh, all of us, until the maybe the early 90s. Huh? And it was mainly um, a, a teacher center, a very clear teaching center. And um, sometimes there were uh, whole lessons we, without the, the students talking. And sometimes if there was any type of technology uh, brought in the classroom, it was forbidden and of course uh, confiscated sometimes. Education 2.0 is what uh, most people call of the education systems we have in most countries nowadays. Of course, things are changing in some areas, some regions, in some uh, uh, specific schools. Uh, but more or less, this is what we live today, where communication collaboration is happening. It is mainly exam-based approach. Um, so uh, everyone is preparing for some examination, more or less, to complete a class or to com complete a degree or a certificate or a, uh, a course, uh, uh, whatever, or uh, a living certificate. The, uh, they, there is a kind of a student-centered approach uh, trying to be developed, but it's not a, a clear student-centered approach. Uh, we see invasion of technology and social networking, you know, of course. We apply technology in the classroom as a trend indicator mostly, but the class continues to have the same structure as we have seen. There is a lot of confusion. Students sometimes know technology is better than the teachers. There is no design of what is used and what is not. There are many choices. There is no money to buy new technologies. Uh, data is everywhere, but nobody knows how to use it appropriately. So software is becoming obsolete. Computers are getting old. Um, anyway, it's obvious that we were not ready for COVID-19, right? And, and suddenly people couldn't go to school, students couldn't go to school, and, and most of the countries were not ready to support uh, the learning. So, um, uh, and we all, we all can accept that sometimes students, we're talking about school students always, are giving technical knowledge to their teachers nowadays. So keep that in mind. Education 3.0 is, is what um, in some countries and in some regions are moving towards a more clear student-centered approach, where we stop at talking about teaching, but we should talk more about learning. We should stop about we should not talk much about teaching hours, but we should talk about learning hours. So the language and the nomenclature we use should be changing. The teacher may not be called a teacher anymore, but we may be talking about a facilitator of learning, for example, a coordinator, an advisor. The student has to do has to be involved in more research, more project based work. The flip classroom methods are more applied, but we need solutions. Uh, in many cases, we have uh, new methodologies nowadays developing hybrid learning, for example. There is more dialogue, uh, more technologies everywhere, more freedom for the curriculum. The classical style classroom may not lo any longer exist. And of course, the lesson plans are now called learning plans. So we see more people working in groups, like the picture you see. Uh, we maybe see some uh, learning spaces, not teaching spaces, but learning spaces of the future looking like this or looking like this, more open spaces. And students and teachers interact in, in project uh, work and learning uh, activities. And then we have the CLEAR 4.0, which probably it doesn't exist anywhere, uh, but it's more or less what we would call a co-creation and innovation in the center, anywhere, any place, 
flipped, flipped classroom applied with a hybrid learning environment. Uh, this, the learning process can become uh, more digital as we will see later on in the STEM School of the Future. Uh, so this will allow um, more time for, for teachers or facilitators to interact with the students in a face-to-face -face and, and give support to weak and, 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 uh, and talented students, etc., etc., and more support into what we call mixed ability uh, groups of learning. I don't call them classrooms. I call them groups of or learning or learning groups. So learning is done at home uh, sometimes or outside the school. Why not? Anywhere, any place. But we need solutions for that. Development of personalized teaching and learning because now we can have more time. And of course, uh, learning plans are now called learning and creativity plans. So the STEAM project developed what we call learning and creativity plans. And so we're moving from education 2.0, where we have the so-called lesson plans, and then we move into learning plans. We don't do any more lessons. We we should give more emphasis into the learning. Huh? Uh, so we do we 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 try to think more into the student-centered approach. And of course, the 4.0 is the we call it learning and creativity plans. Of course, there are someone can call them differently, but in in our STEAM project, which is a a, a, a method of project-based learning in developing competences and, and giving access to learning in an indirect way uh, and approach, as we will show you. Uh, we we developing now the so-called learning and creativity plans, and we have many examples to show you on this. And I will show you also where to find them and ready-made uh, examples of learning and creativity plans and, uh, and tools. Of course, when we say STEAM, eh, is what we all know that started with STEM, then it became STEAM. In some cases, we heard about STEAM and STEAM. -er. For us, STEAM -er is the STEAM, the known STEAM that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics with an, ad an added E at the end, which stands for entrepreneurship, because entrepreneurship is a skill and competence that uh, we consider all youth should have or develop or understand as they will become the future innovators and the future creators and, and the future employees of the market. So they have to understand entrepreneurship from very early age, early, early, early age, because this will help them become more uh, better creators, etc. And this is, of course, part of the priorities of the European Commission through the Erasmus Plus program, uh, which is uh, now embedded into the STEAM. So the STEAM project, which has was had the title guidelines for developing and implementing STEAM schools, is uh, answered to the following questions. We needed a model of STEAM schools. We needed guidelines for STEAM activities in schools. And when we say in schools, we mean current schools and future schools. Guidelines for cooperation between teachers of different disciplines. That's another big question, because when we ask teachers, how can you support you know, multi-disciplinary uh, 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 project-based work for students. Say, okay, I'm a mathematician, but I don't know biology. So how can I do a project involving mathematics and biology? If you ask the biology uh, teacher, they say, I, I, I don't know much mathematics or, or physics or, or arts to combine things. So we needed to help the, the teachers how to work together and, of course, um, how to co-create uh, learning and creativity plans and and how to support the students. So we have the solutions for this and I'll show you a little bit and where to find them. Guidelines for cooperation between teachers in different disciplines. We said that new new organization structures for STEAM schools, uh, training for teachers uh, helped them to adapt and we have developed a training course in, on the website of this project. Of course, you can find indeed in a form of a webinar as well. Uh, with all the elements, uh, there are I think about 10, 10 different modules of what the future teachers need in order to change into education 3.0 and, and eventually 4.0. And then, of course, we need a dynamic change in curricula to the middle. What do I mean by dynamic curricula? Actually, it's meaning I, I, I would, I tend to say maybe we don't need curricula. In other words, we need to adapt. We need to develop the competences to adapt to change. So curriculum should be more open, 
more adapting adapted to to the needs of the students and more adapted to the ability of the students so uh, the there should be probably not a fixed curriculum at the same level for all so so this is not easy to do but if the teachers develop the, the competence then we can transfer this uh, uh, this competence into the students in order to help them adapt to change so the issue of the future is not to keep training teachers or keep training ourselves but of course we we should be able to have the competence to adapt ourselves into the change and if we have the competence then we would be ready to 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 bring the change uh, without having to be trained or without having anyone really to 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 inform us about it um, so the main outputs of this project is guidelines for dynamic and adaptive steam curricula this already published on the website the, this is based on a investigation of the whole world actually on what is happening in STEM schools? You will see there are schools that have no classrooms hmm, at all today. Uh, you will see uh, uh, schools which are flexible in opening to bigger spaces. You can see walls going down to the earth and, and opening up spaces. You can see, um, as we will, uh, you will see in our school, uh, learning stations, learning rooms. Huh? So learning should be could become a la carte sometimes or should be easily accessible to to recall learning huh? because the issue is not to have the the knowledge uh, and then after a few months many students forget them what happens you you cannot teach them again so they have to have the ability to recall learning and use it whenever they need it so it is more important to know how to apply knowledge than really receiving the knowledge because if you have the competence to to find the knowledge and you know how to use it, that's more important. And we all know the what the, 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 all the surveys and the investigation show of what companies, let's say, the market, the industry is looking for when they hire people. We all know that knowledge, which are the degrees we have, is coming number three in the, in the preference. And then number two is usually the skills, soft skills and competences. And most important in most cases is really communication, because how much knowledge I, no matter how much knowledge I have, how much competence I have, if I cannot communicate my knowledge and competence to third people, I cannot really use my knowledge. I cannot cooperate. I cannot develop. I cannot co-create. I cannot cooperate. I cannot co-develop. So this is this is what we're talking about. And of course, the O2 output two is guidance for STEM activities in schools for two age groups. So we developed uh, learning and creativity plans for two age groups, the grade seven to nine and grade 10 to 12, ready to be used. The, the, these learning and creativity plans, of course, with content and also um, evaluation rubric, a special evaluation rubric and a model. Uh, so at least two two teachers can how two teachers can work together. So all learning and creativity plans assume a minimum of two teachers of two different disciplines working together. In in of course the more the better sometimes, but that this is a, a condition that it's a comparison between at least two teachers. And of course the the learning and creativity plans for grade seven can also be used for grade five and six easily. And then the output three that I will show you is uh, how to uh, how to do activities in existing schools. And if you're going to build a future school and you have enough money, of course, then how should this look like? So we give you a school of the future, which um, has a high cost today in in really to do it. But in the future, it may not. But of course, we met people listen to this, we met people who claim that by 2050 there will be no schools. We met people who said that uh, knowledge and, uh, would be so easily accessible through digital learning that uh, we will have the so-called learning communities huh, in the neighborhoods where people will meet, students will meet to develop competences and skills because knowledge would be easily accessible anytime, any place. So you will, will I also show you um, after we present the School of the Future, um, 
uh, what uh, parallel projects are running now in completing these parts. So this is what the, the book uh, of Output 1 looks like, and these are the chapters, approaching to teaching, materials for teaching, entrepreneurship aspects, etc. organization suggestions. This is already published. I will make a link short. This is the uh, output to the guidelines for STEM activities in schools for two age groups. And this, these are the chapters, the STEM framework of learning, guide to, to learning and creativity plan, how to create learning and creativity plans, in other words, uh, cooperation creativity program between schools and industry, another angle which is also important and links also to entrepreneurship. And of course, the STEAM observatory, which I'm going to open in a few seconds. And two uh, company handbooks, one only in English and one is some uh, languages of the partnership, which gives you ready-made uh, STEM learning and creativity plan all together in one in one handbook. And of course, the what is this STEM learning and creativity plan? It looks like this, the first page, of course, and it's a it's a structure, it's a template. There, is, there are empty templates in different languages on the website. You can find, I will show you. And uh, of course, um, these are designed for minimum two teachers collaboration. This is a model of uh, how two teachers uh, can cooperate, teacher one, first column, teacher two, and the students in the middle, when the students are working in, um, in uh, project-based groups. And these are 18 steps. Uh, with um, recycle uh, reverse uh, and how two teachers can support the uh, uh, working groups. And of course, now keep in mind that we have another project, STEMIA Goes Hybrid, where we design how we run this uh, project-based work in a hybrid environment. That was the other uh, challenge. And of course, here we have a, a template for evaluating students on uh, on uh, on project-based work, which is based mainly on on competences, on project management, uh, of formative assessment, etc. We have a a full uh, completed um, template for you on how to use the 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 indicators and what are the evaluation uh, rubrics that uh, you can use in order to. Uh, assess students and of course you do this together with another teacher at least and how you can make a, 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 a great indication if you like. All right, uh, then this is the Obstemi Observatory. How, what, can, what can you find here? Here we are in the website of the STEME. Here you can see many banners. This is the observatory, a policy recommendation made in different languages, a European STEME conference that is coming up, keep in mind, end of June in uh, Thessaloniki, Greece, a symposium that took place, a European training course which has the form of um, with different modules, PowerPoint, video material is there on different topics, how teachers can work together, how to help teachers and students work online, how to support students in making oral presentation, right? The communication is important, we said, how to write papers, reports. We're also publishing a journal for the students, a STEM and journal for and by students, uh, how to work at, uh, on projects, inquiry-based, project-based learning, how to work on on projects, peer questions, etc. So there is a course and the videos are, are there also as a webinar. Videos are not, of course, edited. But let me open the observatory, which is uh, ready material and dynamic material in the sense that dynamic material, we mean that you can submit your own creations as well. You can submit um, your learning and creativity plan. But we have the learning plans in two grade levels, seven, nine, uh, two sets of grade levels, 7, 9, and 10, 12. And here, of course, you can find ready-made learning and creativity plans in English and some other languages in some cases, uh, about five different languages we involve. And of course, you can find the learning creativity plan, the worksheets, uh, videos related in some cases, etc. 
And uh, uh, if I uh, open just one to see, it's very simple to open. And you can see the full uh, template. We don't have time to, to go through it in detail, but we will be running some training courses coming up uh, in the next months. If you like to attend using your Erasmus uh, mobility funds, and you can um, uh, participate in a training with hands on on how to construct your own learning and credibility plan and how to apply this. So let me let me go back to to the slides. You can find many much more information in this observatory. There are many school sites which are working like STEM schools. You can upload your school if you do in many STEM activities, for example, and much uh, a lot of uh, useful information that you can find. Of course, photos and videos can be found here, and some of the videos I will show coming up there. You can find them there. So let me. This is the training course I already mentioned, and I, I, I we travel through the banner. And you can also find the future sessions here. And um, and I already uh, mentioned the journal of STEAM creations for and by school students. The specifications and the submission of process is written, can be found, of course, on the website. Just a click to show you where it is on the website. And of course, you can find it with uh, submission specifications and a template of an article uh, to be prepared by the students. The students do projects, they, they, they do some work, they can now publish their work. Huh? This is important for the students nowadays. OK, we go to the uh, to the output three, which is the guidelines for uh, schools of type A. The type A are the today's schools and type B are the future schools. Uh, and these are the content uh, overview results from the survey results from the focus groups that we run, the STEAM training course for teachers, organization structure of type A schools and type B schools. The type B schools are the future school and we'll show you our future school and the policy recommendations. Uh, this, by the way, it can be found in the in the results here, project uh, STEAM project outputs, and you can find them all here. You can download them and they are available in several languages. Let me go to the next slide. Of course, we did a survey. We asked teachers, we asked experts, and we asked school principals, etc. It's not the decision of the partners only, so it's, it's based on, on some feedback we received. And we took these results of the survey, and then we had them through focus groups with expert, experts again, uh, in order to really come up with our suggestions. So here, you can see some slides of results from the survey. The full survey is included in the output three. The STEAM program should shape the education process of the school and the classroom design, not the other way around. Majority has this impression. The classroom layout should be aligned with the outcomes of STEAM and blended learning. Majority agrees. The classroom furniture has to be movable in order to enhance the layout flexibility. OK, majority. To achieve blended learning, the STEAM classroom should be part of a flexible infrastructure, an open space, interior design, a large room. Hmm. These things are not easy to do nowadays or change uh, or too costly, but we are looking into the future, as we say. The classroom should be purposely designed for STEAM, hmm. project-based learning, cooperative learning, uh, enough space for two teachers to be involved, to more than two teachers to be involved, give space, give high, give high ceiling, the school we design, and you will see in a moment, is six meeting, minimum six meters high ceilings. Um, ideas related to the assessment. Assessment should be creation based without the typical exams, but outcome assessment and creativity assessment. Assessment should become a co-assessment between teachers who need to learn to work together in different fields. Does teachers need training for the change of mode of facilitating the learning and assessment? Uh, STEAM schools must integrate the following spaces, studying space on a creativity environment, direct instruction, etc. I'm, I'm going to skip this because you will see real architectural, architectural uh, animations. Uh, of course, many people think that we don't need paper books anymore. All books should be digital. Students come to school without school bags. We have seen schools like this where 
students don't go with a bag of books. They only take their tablet with them. Uh, we have seen schools without, uh, with internet, but no Wi-Fi, so they can connect any place and, and get access to internet, but no Wi-Fi in the school. Um, school should be all-day schools, like eight to five, for example, and after five, no, no book should be allowed to be taken home, no homework. Everything has, can be done from eight to five. No, no study after five. Huh? Uh, so let's see what we have thought and based on our interaction and based on our relation to nature, what we think or we came up with a design of a school of the future. And this is the design of the school of the future. It follows the design of bees worn cells. So we follow the bees, the bees give us the direction to use hexagons. Hexagons connect together easily and you can grow a school. Here, of course, this is a mammoth, as we say, school. It's full, sustained by energy with photovoltaics. There is a field on the roofs. There is um, uh, an athletic center on one side where it's open in the morning for the students and in, in the afternoon it closes and opens to the community. So the community can use the athletic center, the sports center in the evenings, for example, and pay uh, a fee and sustain. So let's see more pictures and more animations of this an angle. You can have cafeterias on the roof if you like. Also, you can have stadiums on the roof, depending on the size you make it. This is a huge uh, school, of course, it's 50 meters each side of the of the hexagon. And um, uh, here is this list of laboratories one would need with today's knowledge in the basement, for example, including virtual reality rooms and all, everything. These are the main laboratories. But then on the third on the ground floor, we have the so-called satellite laboratories, smaller laboratories. So when students are working in groups, they can um, they can access some materials sometimes without having to go into the main laboratories. Um, on the first floor, we have a uh, open space, flexible mobile furniture. We have the, the, the learning stations We are imagine a situation where a group of students are working on a project and suddenly the, the teachers realize that the students are missing some knowledge. What is the solution to this? The students are sent to the learning stations. They put their uh, headphones, uh, they watch a video, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. They learn the missing knowledge and they come back to apply it. Or they all go together into a learning room to learn together, interact with the presence of the teacher, etc. So, so that's why I said earlier, the knowledge you need may become a la carte sometimes, and why not accessible anytime and when you need it. But the issue is to have the competences to be able to access it to, to uh, and, and the, what I mentioned about 15, 30 and 45 minutes videos, this relates to the ability of the students as well. So it doesn't matter what the ability of the students, we give them repetition, we give them access to a slower motion learning uh, uh, to, to, to adapt to their needs. So we are not forcing students to adapt to, to us, we, we try to adapt to the students. This is the future. And of course, the roof has, has, uh, could have recreation spaces, etc. But uh, I will show you real picture. This is a, a, a section of the basement where you can see the virtual reality rooms, the laboratories around the, the sports center here, the closed amphitheater inside, lobby areas, working areas of the students, etc. More on the ground floor with a smaller amphitheater. The amphitheaters are not made for lecture only. They could be some lectures, of course, but imagine the students will be giving lectures and presentations to their fellow students because students will be working on projects and they they need to communicate, communicate their findings to their fellow uh, students and teachers, of course. It's a co-creation environment. Huh? And so this is some picture from uh, from the basement. And imagine the new the, the new technologies for uh, for sports uh, uh, fields. And let me show you a short video of what technology can be used using the the latest LED uh, uh, light system. Uh, it's a few seconds. <laughs> Thank you. 
So one space fits all, that's the idea. You don't need many fields. You can have one converted into whatever unit. So you, we have adaptable sports spaces, that's what they, so the word adaptability is everywhere. So here we can see uh, steam basement labs, the virtual reality laboratories from outside, some pictures from the ground floor. These are the learning centers where students can go alone and, and, and receive knowledge or uh, or record knowledge for example these are the learning rooms i mentioned earlier where they can work in groups uh, the teachers may be present they can watch videos together etc and and um, uh, receive knowledge uh, in uh, a cooperative approach some pictures from first floor first floor and what else we we thought to create some movement mobility, some, some, some game, game approach, let's say, whatever you want to feel about it, but it's a train. This is a, a magnetic train moving around the building, uh, noiseless, with students sitting and working on it. You can have, uh, of course, uh, buttons with, which, which could be closed and sealed in order to be completely noiseless or so you can have a whole uh, learning group in a, in a wagon, but this wagon is about in this huge school 600 and more uh, meters uh, running and it would be moving slow at the speed of two, three kilometers per hour. So you can jump uh, on it and, and get off easily. Uh, this is going to, going to be on the first floor. We can see the learning rooms from outside learning stations, a picture from the first floor down to the ground floor, and what else? Why not? We propose to have a different colors of this school every day. So imagine working in the school every day, coming to the school every day, and you see different colors. And there are many technologies you can use today to change color, either with lights or, or panels or whatever. You can keep changing colors of the school. and. and and, and students need that. This is quickly some idea and suggestion that we should all be learning the international sign language in all curricula in all schools of the world so we can communicate between us because the sign language uh, differs from nation to nation. And the sign and the deaf students and deaf people have difficulty in mobility for because. But if we all know the sign, international sign language, we can solve many security problems and I have many examples on this but I don't have time to tell you but imagine if someone is in danger and is behind a glass and you don't hear him he can give you a sign that he needs help and you can really get the message so there are many many examples here is um, is a video of the of this call you just saw Um, so, three steps to change to the future from education 2.0 to education 4.0. You need the first step is to secure digital learning through learning videos. We have one project that actually just started the bring your own device and it's actually to to help the teachers make all of their uh, teaching um, and learning uh, scenarios and, and classes into a video. So all learning can be um, saved in a video of three different speeds, the 15 minutes, the 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The students will have access to it anytime, any place. 
even through their smartphones, while they are in the car, in the bus, in the train, where they are at home, where in the mountains, whatever, it doesn't matter where they sit in a cafe, they can watch a video, a learning video. And this is useful because the teachers can save time. And if the teachers can save time, they can work with the students in projects. They can work with the students to give them individual learning support. They can work with weak students. They can work with talented students and of course support the whole learning um, process better. Then the step two, when you have that secure, then you have to train the teachers how to cooperate between different disciplines and how to develop co-creative and you may say STEM learning and creativity plans. So when we train the teachers, we have the videos, the learning into videos, we train the teachers how to work together, how to create projects, etc. And we have the, the critical mass, let's say, of the teachers that we need. So what is the next step? The next, so we need to give teachers freedom to create, give students freedom to create also. And then we can create open spaces in current schools. I know in some countries where they piloted and, and they move into this direction, they, they demolish walls in public schools and to make bigger open spaces. OK, so when we have the critical, we, when we have the shift of the learning into digital learning and when we have the teachers know how to to support the groups of students into project based learning, etc. And how to use the technology effectively, how we have the ready, the learning stations and the and the learning rooms, etc. Then we are ready to really to move into the final stage or or building schools with open spaces, etc. So these are the main three steps, I would say, that we suggest based, based on the knowledge we have today. But we need more blocks. And I have a few more minutes to tell you what is coming up because more projects are running. That's why I said the project ended, the STEM project ended end of December, but we just started. So we move in STEM and goes hybrid. We're working on a project for six months now to design and support the teachers how to to support project based learning in a hybrid environment. Some students in, in school, some students at home, all students at home, some teachers at home, etc., etc., uh, or or any place, or, or students from different schools working together, etc. So this is the STEM Coast hybrid is giving solutions to. We have the entry project that started last June, empowering schools transition readiness to a distance hybrid learning model. So this, this will give different insights into cloud technology tools and the use of them. The own life, which is a power, empowering hybrid competences for on life adaptable teaching in school education in times of pandemic. This specifically to give solutions in times of pandemics. And then we have the bring your own device, which we start, just started. This will develop the learning videos I mentioned earlier in three different speeds. So we will train the teachers how to develop effective videos, what technologies they can use. There is more than one way to develop uh, learning videos and how to have them act accessible to their students, either for further learning, because today we do teaching in most schools, right, in the traditional way, but at least we can get ready for the transition. Or in case we have all these videos available, we are not afraid of pandemics anymore or lockdowns because if we have lockdown, we already have the the, the knowledge in a video accessible to our students. Huh? OK, and then, of course, we have to consider climate, environment and other issues. So we have a project Teach the Future, which deals with these issues. Uh, and we will, um, uh, of course, as I say, completing the puzzle huh? and a new project that is is considered more on debate and diversity for mathematics, of course, but it can be used for other subjects. So in this, we will support the, the communication huh, of the uh, between the students and another piece of the puzzle. And of course, another project we're starting now is facilitate artificial intelligence, how to teach artificial intelligence in schools. Nobody knows, I think, or most people don't know. Um, we will uh, work with uh, university experts to to help the teachers understand what is artificial intelligence, and then the teachers will will design uh, the curriculum how to teach artificial intelligence in schools. 
and try. I will be finishing in two minutes, I think, three minutes. Um, STEMI Academy is a, is a proposal we submitted last September. We are expecting results any moment. I hope the result will be positive. It's um, taking all these results, all these results outputs from this project I mentioned and put them in a STEAM uh, Teacher Facilitators Academy. This is a huge project that is going to build a model and a support system for, for teacher academy in order to create the STEAM teachers of the future. And in order to support many of that, uh, of such teacher academies, forming a federation of such teacher academies, supported digitally, of course, and what is the purpose? We we develop the critical mass of future STEAM ed teachers. And if we have a critical mass developed, then we can start changing the learning systems in schools and moving towards education 4.0 or project-based learning in a greater uh, uh, application. And of course, we, we didn't forget for whom we do this. We do this for students. And of course, we need the feedback. And the students, we think that the students will bring the change. So we made another small scale project proposal. We hope it's going to be approved soon. And we started to develop a European STEAM school students community. So we want to develop and support as mentors, uh, STEAM students, school students in Europe who are going to be encouraged to communicate between them and present projects to each other uh, through uh, internet, of course, online systems, video conferencing, and we will support them to develop a community, maybe develop even an association, but we will be inviting them to an, uh, the annual um, uh, school student, students, Euromath and Euroscience, if you know about it, which is an annual event, and they will be able to, to meet there every year, for example, in order to um, uh, exchange ideas and and we believe that the students will demand because I will say one more thing soon the students are ready and we are not steam parents so, so steam parents is another angle we should not forget the parents and the role of the parents and if the steam and the, if the parents know about steam and and project based learning and experimentation etc then they can make their kitchen uh, uh, a place for uh, creation for their kids their backyard, their garage, whatever. So uh, we want parents to know. And also we want parents to, to support their kids in developing careers in STEAM uh, subjects. Huh? We need more people into STEAM subject because it is it's not that other subjects are underestimated, not at all. It's just these people are the people who are going to contribute more into technologies. In, in, as expected, and we like more people to follow careers in STEAM uh, subjects. So we're talking about um, a paradigm, a paradigm shift, and this can be completed. We hope with all these uh, creations we do, and we hope that um, uh, uh, we can start. Uh, or we hope we see such a school built by some investors, at least in the coming years. Uh, I can tell you we we did, we did have some approach on this aspect, but the yeast is ready. Let's make the bread. And this is a picture I stole from Facebook where you can see what it shows. And, and I think this supports what I said earlier. Students are ready, we are now ready for them. Huh? So imagine these kids from third world countries, when they get a smartphone on their hand, what they will do. You know, they are smiling to assure now because they don't have a smartphone. So they are ready for the technology, but they don't have it. We invest in the development of competence and skills. The competences to discover, recall, and apply knowledge, and the competence to self-adapt to change in technology. This is what we're trying to do. The next Euromath and Euroscience conference I mentioned, where we hope to support the European community of students, is going to be in Thessaloniki. If you are interested, this is the website. And uh, of course, uh, there are many, many competitions happening there. The math factor, science factor, which is like the X factor, but instead of thinking it's communication, mathematics and science, there is a competition. Uh, for European STEM communication competition for teachers mainly, I would say, but it is for adults. This is like TEDx, 
but it's a it's a it's a competition to communicate STEM subjects in five minutes, and when you are placed to the finals of the European STEM communication, which would take place in Thessaloniki. So this is the only one we have for others, and we hope to support teachers for this. There is a competition in cooperation with the European Mathematical Society, the journalistic article competition for school students. And the theme this year is the role of mathematics in STEM education. So we like to see journalistic articles on this. The deadline is 2nd of May. And there is another related competition, European comic poster competition, infographics, comics, poster competition type uh, related to this project, the EH STEM. And we would be happy to see submissions. Uh, and there's another STEM summit come. Uh, in uh, this is in Cyprus next summer. If you are interested, we do many steamer related activities uh, uh, based on learning and creative plants, but based on other uh, activities, creative activities for ages for grades four to nine, ages ten to fifteen. And here are my partners. Uh, the project is coordinated by the Cyprus Mathematical Society. Uh, partners is the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute of the Ministry of Education of Cyprus, the Uni Pedagogical University of Krakow in Poland, Duga School in Greece, ITCS School in Italy, and the Institute of Accelerating Systems and Application Research Center of the Technological University of Athens, and the uh, and the Ivan Apostolov School uh, in Bulgaria. This is the email of the project and this is my email if you like to communicate and subscribe to our newsletters thank you very much thank I you I have thank you <laughs> thank you very much gregory for your presentation and this trip to the education of the future it was very useful to know more about this school model and we have received a lot of reactions and comments and interesting questions so a lot of people were asking about the student's age for the STEAM project. Uh, what ages is it addressed to? Yeah, as I said, it, it covers learning and creativity plans for two age groups, uh, grade uh, 7 to 9 and 10 to 12. That grade 7 means around the age of 12, 13. But as, as I mentioned, it supports also the grade 7 to 9 can be used also by grade 5 and 6 which means uh, around the age of 10 to 12. So it's from 10 to 18, most of the activities design. Perfect, thank you. And also another question, could you share your thoughts about design education that might work as a multidisciplinary process? Um, yeah, I mean, the STEAM, the STEAM design learning and creativity plans is a multidisciplinary process because it involves at least two fields. Two teachers of two different disciplines means two fields. Huh? So it, it has to have at least two fields involved in a project. In some of the examples we have in the observatory, there are three topics, three subjects. Huh? You can have, for example, mathematics, biology and arts. You can have um, physics, chemistry, and entrepreneurship. Huh? So you, all the all the examples we give, there are more than twenty ready to be used. Uh, involve at least each one involves at least two different disciplines. So it's a multidisciplinary. Great, thank you. And also, how to start achieving the STEAM school model if there is a lack of resources? Where to begin? Yeah, that's what I also said as step one. The step one is to try to uh, transfer the, the teaching teachers do nowadays into a video learning. And this can easily be done like uh, using Teams right now. I can record myself giving a lecture or a Zoom or I can use the uh, PowerPoint with uh, voiceover, with video over and make uh, the 45 minutes class teaching of a topic can be transferred easily into, into uh, a learning video. But the challenge for every teacher is to try really to develop a learning video of the same material, same topic, but three different speeds. Imagine trying to do this, 15 minutes to, to transfer this knowledge, this learning to the student, facilitate the learning. This is the right phrase. 
Okay, in 30 minutes, in 45 minutes. This is a big challenge. And teachers need help for this. They need training. Uh, we are developing a solution for this through the Bring Your Own Device project that we just started. We're going to develop the methodology, a training course, etc., and also a, a, a large set of such learning videos. And we will be inviting, of course, um, we will be inviting, of course, teachers to uh, upload their own learning video if they wish into this platform. So we're creating a platform for this. Great, thank you. And another question, uh, which role plays artificial intelligence in education 4.0? Will it replace the teacher? Ah, uh, no. Actually, even the learning videos, we think that this will create new jobs. If, if, if people think that uh, learning videos or artificial intelligence would replace the teachers around because artificial intelligence will be designed by teachers and they will be supported by teachers in order for the students to develop the, the competences and the skills and the understanding. So we need the teachers and we need trained teachers to do this. So uh, teachers role will never stop because simply artificial intelligence can become smart, but it can become smart through the people, through the uh, programmers, etc. So we always need teachers because we're not going to, to use artificial intelligence to replace learning completely, right? We, it would be one, another topic because artificial intelligence is considered to be like uh, microelectronics, for example, is considered to be technologies and, and approaches that are needed in future um, uh, technologies that will make our life better, will make the quality of the life of the people, right? So we need youth, to, to leave schools ready to think in, in a different way. And students uh, are already thinking in a different way. We are not adapting to them. This is the problem. The students are moving faster than us in technologies and everything. They are bored. They feel bored in many learning environments today that we have in many countries. We are losing the students. We have to change faster and we the teachers have to change faster and they and and they and the uh, governments and the authorities that's why we develop a policy recommendation in the STEMI project and you can find it we send a letter to all ministers of education of europe and beyond and we are uh, we whatever we develop is available to be used by anyone but we need to to change we cannot stay like this for too long uh, otherwise we're going to lose our youth because the youth will find no reason to be in school because they will be able to receive everything they need outside the school. But we need them to come to school to come interaction with the teachers because the teachers will co-create with them and will help them develop the competences that we think they need because the market needs as well. So all this, all this will eventually uh, develop into a learning environment that everyone would be developing, the teachers would be developing, the students would be developing, everyone would be adapting to the change, everyone will developing competences, etc. Knowledge would be easy, accessible, recalled, recovered, etc. The issue is the students and the youth need to develop competences. Thank you, Gregory, so much for all your answers. We don't have more time to address more questions, so I would like to sincerely thank you all for being here today. If you haven't signed the signature list, please do so. My colleagues have shared the link in the chat. A big thanks again uh, to our speaker, Dr. Gregory Macridis, for sharing you. with us your STEAM project. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Write to me, you need to communicate. We hope to see you all at our next Scientix webinar organized with the STEM Alliance and IBM, integrating IBM skills built for students on the 10th of February. IBM experts will explain how to use the skill built platform to create lessons plans. So thank you very much and see you. Bye bye.